Paul, given you've been accused of being arrogant and living in a bubble. Well, given that it came from Gerry Adams, uh, I think that's enough said in, in respect of that issue. Uh, obviously, we're disappointed that Martin McGuinness has decided to resign and walk away from dealing with these problems. We only had an election seven months ago. Arlene was returned uh, with a renewed mandate, over 200,000 votes. Sinn Féin didn't like that. I can understand why. Uh, but we need to work through these problems. Instead, they've walked through the door. Now, we'll go to the country. We'll put forward our positions around this. Uh, but let's be clear, this is not about RHI. There now can't be an inquiry because of Sinn Féin. We can't uh, recover the monies and put the proposals in uh, that we were ready to do because of Sinn Féin. And instead, uh, they have called an election because this is about removing Arlene Foster as the leader of unionism and weakening unionism in order to try and pursue a Republican agenda. And did the people will Shin, see through that. Did you take Sinn Féin for granted? Did you take their support in the office for granted? No. Uh, we recognise that the electorate, uh, they are the people who return individuals to office. We do business with people on that basis. We're not friends with Sinn Féin. We don't seek to be friends with Sinn Féin, but we do business with Sinn Féin because that's who the electorate decide to return. Um, but the public will suffer as a result of this decision because we can't now have a budget. And Martino Mueller, as the finance minister, knows that more than anybody else. The voluntary and community sector will be putting people on notice. Reform measures around welfare reform, the bedroom tax, for example. I can't now bring a regulation in to stop the bedroom tax being introduced. So Sinn Féin have to be held to account for how they're using the public to pursue a Republican agenda. Well, you could have avoided all of this by Arlene Foster stepping aside for four weeks with hindsight. Does that not look like a better option now? Uh, Arlene Foster was being called to account through a Sinn Féin Republican agenda, not on the basis of evidence, and there is due process to be followed. We said clearly we want the inquiry. We went further than Sinn Féin and said that we would have a public inquiry under the Inquiries Act 2005. Sinn Féin didn't want that. We wanted to have proposals that would have dealt with these costs. Sinn Féin don't want that. Instead, they want to go to the country because there's internal issues within republicanism. That's very clear from the interview that Martin McGuinness has given around who's going to replace him. And there is a wider narrative around the Mays development, the Irish Language Act, all of these things that Sinn Féin don't like, okay. but they are better to work with us and instead they've brought the institutions down. How they come back as a result of the results of the electorate, that therein is the challenge. Okay, Martin O'Miller, was there no other alternative? Well, I think what we're doing today is we're calling time on corruption and on arrogance. Uh, corruption is evidenced by Red Sky, by NAMA, by RHI, and of course there can be no investigation into RHI until Arlene Foster agrees to step, a, step aside. She has scuppered the investigation and no hiding place investigation by refusing to do that. But also breathtaking arrogance, disrespect for the nationalist tradition, as evidenced, as evidenced by the LIFA decision at the, at the mouth of Christmas that Paul Given would take £50,000 from children uh, who want to learn the Irish language. I think you talk about straws that broke the camel's back. RHI uh, and the way the, the DUP have created that mess, refused to show any humility, refused to allow us to have the investigation, refused to let us put right that mess. But also, but also in terms of sectarianism, and Paul is saying about the type of government he wants and the issues he's concerned about, of course, of course we are concerned about those who want to see good governance. But a government, but a government, a, gov no, a government which doesn't have zero tolerance of sectarianism and corruption is no government at all. So did they take the public for granted? Uh, did they bite off more than they could chew? Uh, did they not listen to the warnings? Absolutely. The DUP were told again and again and again, act with respect to everyone. Parity of esteem back to the Good Friday Agreement. They refused that. And now we're facing into an election, election about corruption and arrogance. And Martin McGuinness said there would be no return to the status quo, though. So that's quite clearly saying that there will be protracted possibly negotiations. So we could have no Stormont for, for a couple of years. Well, that's up to the DUP in particular. And, and Paul has already said uh, what happens after the election. And I'm saying to people very clearly, there'll be no return to the status quo. We will not go back to any government which tolerates in any way corruption or tolerates in any way sectarianism. And that's what has been allowed to happen in the last few weeks with RHI and with the Leafa decision. We have called time on that. Paul, given about that decision on the Irish language, that was read by many nationalists as extremely arrogant. Well, uh, that's not the case. The Irish language is for everybody. It was unionists that kept the language alive. It was Scottish Presbyterians that kept the language alive. It's a language that all of us should be proud of. Uh, and so whenever you look at bursaries around £500 per child, is that money that could have been better spent? It wasn't an attack on the Irish language. And to sectarianise it, to weaponise it, uh, to use it as a cultural weapon that Sinn Féin have done repeatedly, that is what does most damage to the Irish language. Uh, do you, and you I find yourself in, in long negotiations now where the Irish Language Act, which 
you have been totally opposed to will come on the table and you'll be forced to bring that in to get the institutions up and running again? Well, the DUP have never been forced uh, to do anything at the behest of Sinn Féin and we won't be forced to remove our leader at the behest of Sinn Féin. So what are you saying to the public tonight? You'll have no government for X number of months. No, we want government to work in Northern Ireland. Uh, I believe that uh, in the past we have shown that government can work and none of the issues that Sinn Féin have now used to justify calling time, as they have put it, on these institutions were not there a year ago, two years ago in terms of the maze, for example. But for whatever reason, and the public will know uh, what they are within the Republican movement, they are now using those reasons uh, to bring these institutions to a head.